U prošloj emisiji razgovarali smo s profesorom Jeffreyem Grupom o njegovoj knjizi o korporatizmu, koja je pokazala da se radi o nečem puno kompleksnijem od pukog interesa velikih korporacija za profitom. Korporatizam se otkriva kao psihološka kategorija koja ciljano oblikuje globalnu svijest i ponašanje u skladu s korporacijskim interesima. Izazivanje ratova, neograničeni marketing korištenja antidepresiva, televizijski programi prepuni žutih, banalnih i nepotrebnih vijesti i konačno kontrola svih životno važnih resursa. Sve su to lica korporatizma zamotana u svjetlucavi celofan korporacijskih darova, pogubnih od ergele trojanskih konja. Svijet je za korporacije samo okrugla šahovska ploča s bezbroj nevažnih pijuna. No koji su krajni ciljevi korporatizma? Što kriju njegovi nevidljivi dijelovi? Koliko je daleko sprema nići? I koliko je daleko uopće stigao? Previše pitanja koja još moramo postaviti Jeffrey u grupu autoru knjige Korporatizam. Odgovori stižu ovdje, na rubu znanosti. Dobro večer. Danas nastavljamo razgovor i intervju koje smo započeli prošloga tjedna sa američkim profesorom filozofije Jeffrey Grupom koji stiže za koleđa Henry Ford iz Detroita iz Michigana. U svom životu pisu dosta bogatom ima i godine predavanja na prestižnom Purdue institutu, sveučilištu kao i veliki broj znanstvenih radova, nekoliko knjiga. Međutim, danas smo ovdje zbog knjige koja se zove Korporatizam. Dobro večer. Prošloga tjedna smo već dali nekakve naznake, crtice i opise korporatizma, zato jer je to dosta velika tema koja se na različite načine manifestira. No, ponovimo za one koji su se tek sada uključili, što to jest korporatizam i u kojem smislu ga doživljavate ne samo kao uh, sredstvo stjecanja novca, kapitala ili sprega vlasti i korporacija, već kao jedan psihološki sustav koji zapravo poroblje ljude. Kako biste predstavili korporatizam, kako ga vi vidite? Last week on the show, we discussed how the whole world is con- we can verify is controlled by just very small groups. They control behavior and thought and so forth. Now, to understand corporatism, you have to understand that how all our resources we use and that we need to survive in life are controlled just by a few people. That's one point. And then on the other hand, the world is a huge disaster. There's poverty, disease, war, and so forth everywhere. So corporatism isn't just about small groups of very powerful, monopolistic, wealthy people, wealthy industry leaders controlling our resources. That's part of it. But the other part is they do so in a way that makes the world an absolutely miserable place to be. And the, why do I say that? Because you can see that with your eyes. The continent of Africa has riots and wars all over it. America has impoverished people all over it. And the, those who aren't have to work so much that the family structure is destroyed in America. Corporatism is, yes, it's a force out there where the government, military, and uh, the industries become united, form one force. But more than that, what corporatism really is, is how you, that makes your feelings, how your feelings respond, how your life is structured in response to that, how your life resembles a slave, where you can't make choices. You can't choose what time you get up in the morning. It's chosen for you by what job you have. Some corporation will choose it for you. Ključno što korporatizam nije nekak, tek neka slučajna pojava koja se to dogodila ekonomskim ciklusima, već sva, sve te negativnosti korporatizma obrazlažete u knjizi kao proizvod namire da baš tako bude. Je li to točno? Why isn't there a huge monopolistic corporation out there that decides to make extremely healthy vitamins and foods and medicines for us so to make people live longer so they can make money off them longer. Why doesn't that happen? Why is it always the destruction of humanity that is the project? Because the point isn't to make as much money as possible. The point is to create as much misery as possible. My proof of that is look at the world. The world is at, Most people live their lives not f- having the feelings they want within them. Most people live their lives having to do jobs that they don't like, which make, give them all these you know, depression and so forth that we talked about in the last show. Now, a lot of people will say, well, Jeff, that's just how things have to be. People have to work. I'm not rejecting that. My, the point is, is if you go study a primitive culture, they don't have poverty. 
They've got incredible amounts of leisure time. We don't even understand their lives because they have so much leisure time. They have medicines that are free. Food is free. They have actual wealth, things that they own. Everybody has the same level of house, which can be constructed by anybody. It's a completely different kind of nema, lifestyle. Nema kriminala, primjerice. Uh-huh. There's a, there's a group called the Panan, P-E-N-A-N, in Borneo, with the largest island in, in the world. They don't even have a... It's been reported in a book called Stranger in the Forest, written by Eric Hansen, that they don't even have a word in their language for rape. Okay? <laughs> Now, go tell the average American that rape is just a, is a, a construct of the environmental situation you're in, and they won't believe you. Well, that's evidence that it is. Uh, Korporatizam ima puno lica i puno svojih ruku. U prošle emisije govorili smo o medicini i o uh, nekim drugim elementima kojima korporatizam vlada svijetom. Jedan od najvažnijih je takozvani uh, false flag terorizam, odnosno terorizam pod lažnom zastavom. Što je dakle taj teško prevediv američki idiom false flag terorizam, koji su njegovi primjeri, gdje, ga, da, gdje se danas primjenjuje i zašto? False flag terrorism is a scenario where you are told by the, the powers that control information that some entity of some sort is a threat, but it really isn't. There's a different threat, which they don't tell you about. Now, the big famous example that many people in America are concerned with is 9-11, where we were told that a certain group of people that we can't see, <laughs> that live in caves, did this damage to us, but nobody can prove it. And then if you look into it a little bit, you find out you don't even know if that group exists And further, they didn't do it. None of the, the stuff, there was no plane that hit the Pentagon, okay? They, can't, they couldn't wire up the building, the third building in New York that fell late in the, at 6 o'clock in the evening. So now another thing to understand about false flag terrorism is that it's very important for people to understand what I'm about to say. False flag terrorism is not just that. False flag terrorism makes up the basis of life in American culture. Take, for example, cancer. Everybody in America is worried about cancer. You know, there's, you know, people, it could strike at any time. So their whole life is made up of a threat that may not be real. And in fact, if they just changed the way they ate, there, isn't, there would be no cancer. Proof of that is primitive cultures, as we talked about last time, don't have cancer because they eat different. So if we did the same, we would. So there's, there's another threat that is not quite real or doesn't need to be real. There's many things that take the structure of a false flag where we're told there's a threat, but there really isn't. There's something else that's a threat. So it's, there's big examples, but in general, life overall is a false flag type of attack. Uh, jedan od najvećih false flag događaja, a bilo ih je dosta u ovom stoljeću, jest upravo one koje ste spomenuli, 9.11. U vašoj knjizi odlučili ste se baviti baš avionom i pentagonom, uh, zanemarivši ostale uh, podatke koje ima toliko da se mogu napuniti knjige. Zbog čega ste baš izabrali udar aviona u pentagon i što je to uh, tamo u tolikom raskoraku od onog što se inače govori, drugim rečim u raskoraku zdrave logike, razuma i rasuđivanja? Kako biste drugim rečima nekoga uvjerili da se to nije dogodilo? Kojim argumentima? Yeah, I've had people ask me that before. Why did I just focus on the Pentagon? The answer to that question is, is because I wasn't sure of my analysis yet about the, the, the Twin Towers. Now I am. I hold the very controversial view that there may not have been planes at the Twin Towers. Now in America, even among conspiracy theorists, you're not supposed to say that. But the problem is on NBC, one of the main media broadcast networks in America, when they show the second tower falling and the explosion happening, there was no plane. Right there in the media footage, there's no plane. So I noticed this back when I was writing corporatism, and I didn't want to get into that issue because I wasn't sure. A lot of people were talking about how can the plane hit and couldn't there be planes that don't have pilots. And it said, I didn't want to get into that big mess. It seemed like kind of a trick. We're supposed to argue about all these crazy issues. I wanted to go to the simple issue, the Pentagon, okay? How could it be? There's, it's important to understand about the Pentagon. There was an explosion there. And then 20 minutes later, the, the roof, part of the roof collapsed. Okay, now it's important to understand, before the roof collapsed, the windows weren't even broken. Now, how can a plane going 500 miles an hour that weighs 60 tons with two huge 10-ton engines smash into that wall, not even break a window, not even make any kind of hole in the wall and have no parts anywhere? Answer, there was no plane. Okay. Kakva su službena objašnjenja gdje je avion nestao? Oh. Zašto nisu stakla popucane ili jesu? Da čujemo ponešto od toga. Možda ima istinu u tome. Is, 
is very funny, this story. First of all, they don't typically show... There's Sometimes you'll see the, the before the collapse. Most pictures are after the collapse, and then people will say, of course there was windows broken, the whole... It was, but if you say, well, what about before the collapse? They try not to discuss that in the mass media, but they will, sometimes will show a picture will slip out in the mass media. Now, it's very funny, their explanation of what happened at the Pentagon. They say that the reason that no plane parts were found is because the plane melted. Okay, now this is very humorous, because if steel of that... Uh, that much steel is going to evaporate away, it has to become half the temperature of the surface of the sun. Okay, now, if that, was, if that happened in the middle of Washington, D.C., there could be nobody that could get within 100 miles of Washington, D.C. because it would be so warm. Yet, you look at the Pentagon, you can see right there in parts of the wall that cave collapsed away. There's a book there. The pages aren't even singed and so forth. So they're just lying about what happened. They're making up crazy stories. It's almost like they got in a room and said, let's make up the dumbest, most humorous story possible. Tell them a plane evaporated. <laughs> and we'll tell the people mm-hmm. that. Uh, Kommentirali ste i veličinu rupe u zidu. Oh, yeah. The, it appears the, the pre-collapse Pentagon... Some people say that they can see a little 10-foot hole, which kind of looks like a missile hole. looks a lot like a Scud missile hole. Now, I didn't comment a whole lot on that in corporatism because it's a little bit tough to see exactly what is there. But it does kind of look like there's a hole before the roof collapse. So that evidence with the collapse would have been removed. Interesting. Značilo bi da je cijeli avion proletio kroz tu rupu, ako sam dobro shvatio. <laughs> well, they try to say that, this is good, they try to say that the, the wings folded up. Okay, now, ask yourself, if the two jet engines make up the bulk of the plane, okay, the, the fuselage is just a, a lightweight, light metal, hollow core. It has to be light so the plane can be up in the air. Okay, so if the wings folded up, that means that the two jet engines stopped, reverse direction, moved inward for some unknown reason. What force would cause that? and then proceeded to instantly go 500 miles an hour again into the building, then they melted and evaporated. This is the, the epitome of non-logic, of, of insanity. And it's, it's very funny, really, when you think about it. Ponekad u knjizi citirate i Davida Aika, koji je upravo radi ovakvih situacija, ovakvih objašnjenja, u nekoliko puta komentirao jednom rečenicu koja je glasila ljudi, oni nam se smiju. Po prilici bi se tako moglo opisati slično objašnjenja. Evo, kad smo već spomenuli David Ajka, danas jako popularno lijepiti etiketu teorija urote na nešto. Mislite li da je vaša knjiga Korporatizam, koja je pisana na jedan logičan i znanstven način sa argumentima i čak pomalo nalik uđbeniku, da spada u takozvane teorije urota i što uopće teorije urota jesu? Govori li oni istinu ili ne govore? Je li ovo što vi radite teorija urote? Zbog čega uopće taj pojam postoji? Kakav je vaš stav o tome? Okay, yeah, the book I tried to make where everything in the book relies on something you can see, okay, or as close as possible you can get to that. No theories in the book, so everything I write about, somebody can see happening in the world, so they can see what they're, it's provable to their experience. Now, as far as conspiracy, the re, if you want to understand the world, you have to understand it according to conspiracy. What does that mean? There's a secret, very dark destructive and evil group behind everything. And, and we're talking behind medicine, behind media, behind sports, behind governments, behind war, behind revolution, behind sickness, and so forth. Until you understand that that secret dark group exists, you will not understand the world. You will come up with crazy explanations for how the world can be it, the way it is. Like we were talking about last time, people will, instead of saying, oh, Hitler came to power because he was secretly put there by corporatists, which is verifiable, you can verify this in many different ways. No, instead people will say, oh, he just kind of got there because he got lucky in the German the country up in four years to superpower status. The standard view of history is full of contradictions, absurdities, and madness, really. But if you simply put in the thesis that there's a secret group behind things, a secret evil group behind things, everything about history seems to make sense all of a sudden. Why we have poverty everywhere, why we have these wars that are the same, you know, they mimic each other from era to era. Povijest je dosta važan predmet u našem obrazovanju i kada se čita kondicionalna povijest, a kada se gleda iz pozicije podataka koje vi prezentirate, zapravo se čini da najveći i najvažniji dio potpuno nedostaje. Smatrate li da i za povijesti kakvoj školi, općenito nekih stvari koje se uče u tijekom obrazovanja osnovnog, srednjeg 
isto se krije određeni korporatizam. If you go study what is happening today in schools, what is being taught about the Iraq war in schools today, you will see that they are telling fabrications. So my, to answer your question, if they can't even get, if the corporatists are controlling what's told to children in his, history, about the contemporary history, why, how am I supposed to believe what happened 2,000 years ago about Rome? Or even, you know, just about the Vietnam War in the late 1960s, early 70s. History is unverifiable. If I ask anybody to verify any of this stuff that we are told is truth in school, it, it can't be. So the whole thing is largely made up. Kada pričamo o korporatistima, bilo bi zanimljivo reći koliko, nekoliko reći o njihovim načinima, sredstvima i taktikama kojima se služi. They use the same methods worldwide. It's brainwashing. Teach someone that the false is real and the real is false. Uh, destroy true religion. And what they have is this junk religion that exists. America, people believe that Christianity is about how much faith you have. And then you have St. Paul in the Bible who is about experiencing God, not just believing in God. So the Bible emulates, so they destroy religion and replace it with some garbage. They're doing the same thing to Buddhism and Hinduism now as well. Contamination of people, uh, you know, through the skies, the air, the food, your consciousness is contaminated. Make people do the opposite of what they would like to be doing. Consider a war. Somebody, a young man or woman, at the prime years of their life, being taken out of all the, these fun times they can have with friends, going to school, doing whatever they need to do. Instead, they go over to this horrific environment where they are either going to be killed, or somebody will attempt to kill them, or they're supposed to kill other children. The, the, why, does the, why do the same patterns happen over and over and over? Taxes, trade, controlling the money supply, controlling the resources that people need to survive. You know, saying that, you know, getting rid of, saying there's just one resource that can control the world, oil, and then pretending like no other competing resources like hemp exist. That, they used to say firewood, you know, the kings way back in the day used to say that firewood was the only resource there is and we use it, they used it to control the civilization. <laughs> and it seems so funny now that they would say that that's the only resource there was because now we know that's so untrue, but people believed it. Uh, napisali ste da korporatizam uključuje skriveni terorizam. Možete li nam objasniti tu izjavu? Yeah, when you see somebody like President Obama on television... He's, there's a huge group behind him that is responsible for mass death, war, killing children in Pakistan and so forth. Now, if North Korea does that, on American news, they'll say he's a terrorist. But if American government instru- you know, instigates that happening, they'll say it's patriotic. So what they're saying is terrorism for other people is patriotic for them. So actually, what is terrorism is what they're doing. Koja bi bila uloga think tankova i lobista u korporatizmu? Naime, jednakom logikom kao i sva, o svim drugim temama, pisali ste o pitanju radili znači, kongresmeni ili predstavnici vlada za ljude ili ne i rekli ste da se ljudi trebaju samo zapitati od njihovog radnog vremena koliko vremena potroše na brigu za pitanja društva, a koliko zapravo na razgovore sa različitim lobistima i da će se odgovor sam nametnuti. Znači, lobisti i think tankovi su tu prisutni praktički cijelo vrijeme. Koja je zapravo njihova uloga? Oni se često puta čine kao nekakve skupine mislilaca koje eto nešto predlažu, ali čini se da su važni od toga. A little while ago we mentioned how the most important thing to understand is there is this secret group behind things and if you understand they exist you can make sense of the, out of the world finally. Now, how do we know that they exist? What is a lobbyist? A lobbyist is an ultra-wealthy organization who's given money from corporatists, and they give it in America, they give it to politicians to pass certain types of policy and so forth. Well, what is the point? Who controls things if that's going on? This is, people know lobbyists are all over the place. It's almost funny that they don't understand that their votes mean nothing. Okay, they're, what they say means nothing. Corporatists control what the government does through these bribers, which are lobbyists, who they give money and say, go tell the congressperson to do this, and they, they'll hand the congressperson money and they'll create the legislation. Think tanks are often the, the most powerful think tanks. There's think tanks all over, but the most powerful ones that work for the corporatists will create the policy that the lobbyists will pay the politician to have put in place, and the policy is always more of the same. 
let's just let's ban homeschooling and make sure all the children go to school more than they already do away from their families. Let's have more war. Let's make the organic food industry not pure food anymore. Let's fill it with chemicals and say it's it's perfectly pure and organic. Uh, najkontroverznija strana korporatizma jest ona koja se, čini, uh, koja se tiče kontaminacije čovečanstva koju ste predstavili u jednom od poglavlja. Ljudima je doista teško povjerovati da netko namjerno truje čovečanstvo, mada svakodnevno u hrani ima raznih sastojaka od natrije, glutama, nata, aspartama, GMO i slično. Međutim, sve se to smatra nekako meto žrtvom tehnološkog napretka, trkom za profitom, pa su to slučajne posljedice. No, pod kemijskim trovanjem organiz- čovečanstva namjernim, spominjate tri stvari. Cijepjeva, chemtrailove i morgelone. Pa nešto od toga je više poznato, nešto manje. Krenemo po redu. Na temelju čega smatrate da je zaista posredi da se na- zaista događa namjerno trovanje čovečanstva i s kojim ciljem? All of our food in America in a grocery store has dangerous chemicals. Why not some good chemicals and maybe some bad ones? Why are they all dangerous? That's very peculiar. Okay, vaccines. Unbelievable chemicals that are found. Why would you would you give lead to your baby? Would you inject it in them so their digestive system doesn't even have a chance to excrete it out? Because lead and mercury are both similarly dangerous heavy metals to an infant. Why worldwide is a vaccine loaded there's so much mercury in a vaccine that according to american legal standards if you drop it on the floor it becomes a hazardous special teams have to come in because the mercury content becomes a toxic hazard but if you don't drop it on the floor instead if the nurse doesn't do that and instead injects it into the baby it's called medicine how can this be there's formaldehyde aspartame there's pieces of fetuses fetal tissue in vaccines. Why is all this stuff there? And why do almost no nurses and doctors in America know that they are? If you ask them what's in a vaccine, they'll say the antibodies for, to, to prevent the disease arising from in the person. Okay, are those even there? <laughs> I don't even know if they are. Because whooping cough in America is an epidemic right now. Now, America also in most places is, is immuni- has children and people immunized for whooping cough over the herd immunity rate. That means that there's not supposed to be an epidemic in the group that is vaccinated over the herd immunity rate. It's supposed to be impossible that an epidemic will arise. Oh, okay, if that's true, then why is there an epidemic of whooping cough among children in basically almost every state in America? Okay, I actually emailed the doctor who's behind the whooping cough vaccine in the University of Florida. And I emailed him a very nice email. I said, How can your vaccine work? Is it when you give it to people, the epidemic gets worse? His response to me was one of the most ridiculous and insane things I've ever read. He said, because people's immune systems often can't handle it. And I, and I didn't respond to him, but the response would have been, wait a minute, the vaccine is supposed to provide the immunity. <laughs> so it, it was, uh, vaccines are one of the most mysterious things. And it shows how easy it is for this group, the corporatists, and this much control to contaminate people, to do whatever they want. If people actually take their children in America, their little, beautiful, sweet baby, just a couple hours old, and allow them, somebody to stick an unknown substance into them. And now the same, this entity behind it, the medical system, is the same medical system they're told about on television that creates all these drugs with incredible side effects, death, you know, every kind of side effect you can imagine, and they just smile as their children is shot up with this medication now with this um, poison. Now, what's interesting is if you go and study the history of vaccines, you will find that all these diseases were much, much greater in their, uh, how, you know, how much they were around in the past, in the 1800s, early 1900s, and so forth. And then they started to go down around 1900. And then it was decades later that the vaccine was introduced. And now the average doctor in America will say, oh, well, the vaccines got rid of the disease. And my answer to that is, how can that be the case? Well, there's a chart right in my book that shows, you know, whooping cough, for example. You know, the disease was going down, and then in the 1950s, the, the vaccine was introduced. And then after it was introduced, it went up again <laughs> before it kept going down. Scarlet fever, there's never been a vaccine for it. It was prevalent in the way the other diseases were, started to go down exactly the same way, and like the other ones today, is almost zero. Okay, this, this is absolute proof that vaccines are not doing anything 
except they may be even increasing the diseases in some cases. In my book, I document how there was a Rutgers University professor who discovered in the 1950s that the American military was spraying Florida with whooping cough. Right at the same time, a whooping cough epidemic nationwide in America, a, a little blip of an epidemic happened. So, and this was in a, um, you know, a, a news source, which was somewhat trustworthy then, which was put out of business by the USA Today you know, years later. So the whole thing about vaccines is one of the most obvious but least understood aspects of conspiracy and contamination of people. It's so obvious that we're being contaminated. If you have a level of mercury added to vaccines in England and the same level of mercury is added to vaccines in America, autism goes up exactly the same rate as we discussed last time uh, in those two countries. You reduce it, it goes down exactly the same in places that don't have vaccines, there's no autism. The Amish, which is a, a, a very um, more rustic, even primitive group in America, huge population of people in America, they don't vaccinate. Well, the government's now trying to force them to in America. But they don't vaccinate. There was a, there was a study done of 10,000 children, Amish children, in America. Three had autism. All three were adopted in. All three came from places where there there was an extremely pollutive coal industry nearby, which has mercury in it, which can cause autism. This is absolute proof that autism is caused by mercury in vaccines. What was the FDA's response to that test? It's junk. We need to focus our attention on actual science. And then the FDA goes and passes, makes it legal for RFID chips, which cause cancer, to be put in people. Drugim ličima, prema vašoj knjizi, cijepiva zapravo nisu iskorenila niti smanjila učestalost ni jedne bolesti. No, they haven't. There's, if, if you ask someone, just go ask someone, what diseases have been eradicated by vaccines, almost everybody will say smallpox or polio. Now, and you'll ask them, how do you know that? And they'll say, oh, somebody told me. I heard it on TV or something. But if you actually go and look in books on the history of these, it becomes quite apparent that polio, as I said last time, was never eradicated. It was never that big of an issue, okay? It was on its way out, as the other diseases were. So at the time, it was not a very big issue. And instead, people changed the definition of it, which made it look like there was less polio. Now, smallpox, what appeared to eradicate that was people were um, you know, kept in isolation from each other. It's called ring vaccination. And that, that's a great way to get rid of a disease. Međutim, to nije toliko tajni podatak. U svojoj knjizi ste prenijeli grafikon koji to zorno pokazuje. Taj grafikon je zapravo dostupan, međutim, na neki način uh, nije poznat. The information from that graph is from the World Health Organization. <laughs> This information is known, there is no secret. People just aren't looking for it. They trust the, the, me, the medical system. Okay? There's diseases everywhere, but they somehow think that the medical system is successful, so they just trust the vaccines. Spominjate brojke koje su zapravo užasne, da jedno djete od 160 tisuća danas ima autizam. Također koriste izraz nacifikacija medicine. Što pod time mislite? Yeah, this is an amazing topic. If you study the American medical systems that they use, the procedures, their habits, and so forth, you find that they are actually indistinguishable from what we're told the Nazi concentration camp was like. For example, there's no curing of anything. <laughs> okay? And, the Nazi, it's just, and then the Nazis didn't have any cures for anything. They created problems. Well, that's what American medicine does as well. If you have cancer, I radiate you, and the cancer gets worse. My next-door neighbor had cancer for he had uh, prostate cancer for four years the doctors gave him six weeks to live he his wife said we're not doing any medical treatments what we're going to do is we're going to use supplements and vitamins and good nutrition he had no rise in his prostate cancer level in four years after being given just a few weeks to live and then he for proud of foolishness he stopped that program and, and ate a lot of meat all of a sudden, and his, he had just a, a small uptick in his prostate cancer level, and his wife panicked, gave him radiation treatment, three weeks later he was dead after living perfectly for four years. To se također treba spomenuti flor, koji je zapravo danas vrlo prisutan i u vodi koliko sam shvatio u Americi. Međutim, kakva je to tvar i čemu ona služi? 
Yeah, fluoride is something that is in about 80% of water in America. It was introduced in the Nazi concentration camps. It was a sedative and a toxin that made people, it, it attacks the brain system and it, it's, it re- makes people apathetic and uh, lazy and so forth. They use it in prisons and you can reduce the numbers of fights in prisons and so forth. If you, you, know, if you put so much water in, in, there's so much fluoride in the water in a prison, the level of fights will go down. Put a little more in in a, predict, in a predictable way, the fights go down more. You put enough in, there's no fights at all. Now, this same substance, it it's comes from the nuclear waste industry. Fluoride does. <laughs> it's been put into American water. And we're told the reason is, is because it fights osteoporosis. It helps children with their tooth decay. So my question is, how come America is, has one of the highest rates of osteoporosis in the world if fluoride gives us strong bones and healthy teeth? Why do children have an, an epidemic of tooth decay in America if fluoride helps their teeth? And what we're told is, well, I mean, sometimes people will say, oh, the bottled water is what's responsible for the tooth decay. But half the bottled water has fluoride in it as well. So there's a very, it's a very confusing issue, but it's clear that this is a poisonous substance which comes from nuclear waste, nuclear arms industry, which people ingest. Dakle, još uvijek govorimo o korporatizmu, malo smo se više zadržali na tom jednom području namjernog trovanja stanovništva, kako ste ga opisali u knjizi. Osim cijepjeva istaknuli ste uh, chemtrailove. To je jedna pojava koja je s jedne strane najtajanstvenija, mada je u isto vrijeme najvidljivija. Eto, ja osobno imam puna par- fotoaparat chemtrailova, zato da kad god je vedro, s lakoćom ih se snima iznad Zagreba, iznad Samobora, iznad Pule, iznad Rijeke, iznad Osijeka. Jednostavno, oni su stalno prisutni. Uh, međutim, ipak za one kojima je to možda još strani pojam ili koji nisu dovoljno često gledali prema nebu, uh, možda ste vi dobra osoba da objasnite što su to came trailovi. Za početak, kako se razlikuju od klasičnih tragova aviona i kakve su teorije vezane uz njih? Ok, so, this is one of the most mysterious issues of all. And a lot of people that study conspiracy theory in America need to be a little more careful on their details because it's hard to find out exactly what's going on. It used to be denied by um, universities, government, and so forth, that there was any spraying of any kind going on. Now, in recent years, they're starting to say, okay, we do spray, we do it for, to monitor the weather and various things. And I remember I said earlier that there was spraying of whooping cough admitted by the U.S. United States Army in the 1950s. So the spraying has been going on. Now, we can see this with our eyes happening. What you need to do is start watching for these. You'll see long trails behind a plane that don't uh, evaporate. Now, what's supposed to happen, what's called a contrail, is behind a plane it has a, a vapor trail which is supposed to evaporate over you know, a few seconds or maybe a minute or so. Now, when they sit there for an hour in the sky, you know that there's something in addition to just the jet fuel uh, waste products that is present in the air. And sometimes it's so dense it'll produce a shadow, more dense than a cloud. That's <laughs> obvious proof that there's something much more than standard waste, opera- waste materials in that exhaust from a plane. Now... The question is, what's there? Well, one more thing I should say is that often the trails will have a, what I call an end cap, a cutoff point. You know, you'll see the trail halfway across the sky, and then right in the middle of the sky it'll end, and the plane keeps going. And my question is, did the plane shut off its engine? It doesn't make any sense that the trail would abruptly change to such a, a huge degree. Imali nekakve, uh, može li se objašnjenje naći u postotku vlage u zraku i temperature? Yeah, people have tried to say, you know, when they go to a different altitude, the air changes texture and so forth. But we can see this happening apparently in planes which are not changing altitude. And the, 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 the cutoff will be much too abrupt. It's not a, a, usually the different levels of air are horizontal. Okay, so, a, a, you know, a plane traveling this way would have to have a difference in the air, but, you know, it's, they'd have to go in a vertical direction to enter different air pockets and so forth to create a radically different kind of vapor trail where it has this cap where it immediately ends. So it seems the best theory is, is that there's something in addition to the jet fuel being sprayed. It's very difficult. You have to be very scientific about this and very careful to know what you're saying so you don't want to put people into a panic or something. But it does seem to be, for the reasons I've given and more reasons that we could give, there's something strange going on here. Ta se pojava zapravo vidi po cijelom svijetu. To su ti uzorci koji su nekad mrežasti, nekada se križaju, nekada su jako dramatični. Ponekad je čak moguće promatrati te tragove koji stoje više sati, a dok kraj njih lete avion koji ima sasvim normalni trak, pa je čak moguće usporediti. No, chemtrailovi su nešto za što smo eto mogli čuti, a što više možemo ih i vrlo često doista vidjeti iza naših glava. Naj 
ta jedan stvenija i najčudnija priča koju predstavljate u knjizi vezano uz kemijsko trovanje organizma jest pojava zvana morgeloni, morgelons na engleskom. Što bi bili ti morgeloni i jesu li oni kroz istraživanje određenih liječničkih udruga, struktura, sve učilišta, zapravo prošlo ne korak iz mita u stvarnost? I što su uopće morgeloni za početak? Ok, morgelons, morgelons or morgelons, however you want to pronounce it, appears to be a tiny worm-like machine that operates in ways that are amazing. It's a supernatural technology. Now, when I first started reading about this, I didn't necessarily, I really wanted to be sure that this thing was real because it's such a revealing issue. And yes, universities such as Oklahoma State, Stanford, MIT, universities all over are studying this phenomenon. So it is real. To know exactly what it does, you have to go and listen to the testimonies of the victims of it. And they will tell you stories about this infestation, this disease, which are absolutely amazing. For example, the disease not only can interact with your consciousness, but can take it over. Now, your consciousness, this is a very important issue, because your consciousness is a supernatural entity. I know most people want to say, no, it's just part of your brain. Well, if that was true, then why can't you show me it? And you get a brain encephalogram and show me where it is in your brain. And most people say, oh, it's the, where these neurons are firing. And I'll say, no, that's not consciousness, that's neurons. Show me where love is. Show me where a thought is in there. You can't do it. Our best evidence appears to be the case that consciousness is supernatural and, and beyond matter and somehow different from the brain. It's just coupled with your brain in some way. Now, how can there be a technology that interacts with a supernatural entity? The only answer I think that we can come to for that is that is if the technology was created by a very advanced source. That's why, you know, some people like David Icke have said there is almost a supernatural evil dark group at the top of that, you know, the top of all the corporatist structures in the world. Well, this is almost evidence for that because we see a supernatural technology popping up which we have absolutely no explanation for. Možete li nam opisati morgelone? Što je to? Kako izgleda? Videli se pod mikroskopom? Kakvi su simptomi? Što radi ljudima? Kako da se to uopće predočimo? They, they look like a wad of thread. And what they do to people is torture people. Okay? That's a big theme in corporatism is technologies are created to torture. War is a form of torture. Schooling can be a form of torture. When you take somebody out of their natural environment and give them pain, that's roughly the definition of torture. So that's what Morgellons does. And it will replace parts of your body. Your, parts of your bone and your knee will be replaced in their proper positioning by this other material. Your hair will be replaced by it. So it, it operates, it's like it has a hive behavior where the, the little fibers, the little threads move on their own. They've got self-motion, which is, was Aristotle's definition for what is life. They, they operate together. They know when you, your consciousness is feeling a certain way. If you're going to try to pick some of them out, Okay, they'll know before you start. When you're thinking about it, the fibers will start attacking you over here, give you a sensation of burning or a sensation, some kind of pain here or a pain down here. So, and then when you decide to change your mind and not pick some of the fibers out, it goes away. This is one of the most unbelievable topics, virtually ignored by mass media in America, but this really kind of shows what our world is about because this is so advanced. It kind of shows who and what is behind things, what they're doing. They're just having fun. Well, they're torture victims. Je li reč o nekoj vrsti nanotehnologije i kako izgleda pod mikroskopom? Some people have tried to present evidence that it is possibly a nanobot, nano, nanotechnology robot. That it's possible that we'll find out it is just some ultra-advanced type of human technology. That could happen. At the moment, I'm not going that direction because when you look at it under a microscope, it doesn't have proper moving parts in the way a normal machine does. It appears to be operating on some other kind of force. Uh, you know, when we think of a machine, the car has different parts. The parts interact with each other to make the car go. It doesn't, it's not a machine in that sense of the word at all. So it's a completely different kind of technology than our machine world and our nut and bolt technologies we humans today are used to. Uh, drugim rečima, uh, preporučit ćemo svakom da se sam proba potražiti odgovor jer priča o morgelonima doista zahtjeva naprezanje mašte, mada danas eto već, uh, ako sam dobro shvatio, čak 60 tisuća ljudi se prijavilo centru koji se bavi samo oboljelima od te čudne bolesti morgelone za koju zapravo nismo čuli jer eto nikad u medijima i nije zapravo bila spomenuta. U vašem zadnjem pogledu knjige korporatizam 
počeli smo od ekonomije, novca, svega ono što uobičajeno znamo da korporacije jesu, reklame i slično, oblikovanje mišljenja. Dolazimo do uh, velikih uh, logora koji se grade po Americi. Uh, to je vrlo neobično koliko meni poznato u Europi ih nema. Međutim, kakvi su to logori koji su u Americi grade, čemu oni služe, koliko ljudi trebaju primiti, što se za njih priča da jesu uh, i kako ih povezujete s korporatizmom? Nobody knows exactly why they're built. Ko, koliko ih je? Oh, there's enough to house millions of people. And this is not hidden. This is announced in financial news. Some company just got a big government contract to build. They put a nicely detention centers, okay, which is just a big concentration camp. Now, it's, we were told before Hurricane Katrina, when the Bush administration really ramped up, they've been built for decades. But they, the Bush administration really ramped up how many were built. And we were told by them that this is because there could be an influx of illegal aliens, you know, Mex- Mex- people from Mexico. They call them illegal Im- aliens in America, strange term. Or there could be a disaster, for example, where w- people would be displaced and we'd need the camps. Problem, Hurricane Katrina happened, they weren't used. Okay? New ones were constructed, okay? and the ones that were right around the area weren't used. In Seattle, when there was the huge protest in 1999 in Seattle, people were put into these American citizens. So what we're told they're used for have not been what they're used for so far. Veliko je pitanje i u kojoj mjeri su potrebni logori. Spomenuli ste da uh, je svaki logor za 5000 ljudi da se gradi od 2000 ubrzano i da prema vašim procjenama u njemu može, mogu stati fantastične brojke, spominjete 150 milijuna ljudi. Očito ilegalnih useljenika iz Meksika nema ni približno toliko. Jesu li te brojke vaše točno ili su uh, na temelju čega ste ih dobili? If you take there were many news stories for example in the early 2000s which would say the Bush administration has built a mobile detention center which can house uh, 2000 people and they've built dozens of these and then you so you add up the numbers and then you find another news story where they were building another kind of camp and then they say they built 50 of them you add those numbers up then you have another news story where they built a huge center in say Alaska which can hold a million people and then you add those numbers you keep adding it up and you get to numbers that are in the tens of millions koje je vaše mišljenje, čemu bi trebali ti logori služiti recimo u planu korporatista? Vidjeli smo da je to novac je sredstvo vladavine, mediji, programiranje mišljenja, pa čak i trovanje stanovništva, kontaminacija kroz hranu, kroz lijekove, kroz cijepiva, kroz nekakve čudne pojave kao što su chemtrailovi i morgeloni. Na kraju imamo sad tu i te silne logore koje se zapravo čak i vide na satelitskim snimkama vrlo dobro. Oni su svakako činjenica. No, kakvu ulogu oni imaju u tom planu koliko se može rekonstruirati. Nobody really knows. Conspiracy theorists in America are desperately trying to find out. In my book what I do is I just try to find out what's the best explanation for why they're there. And a lot of what we do is look to the past. When because these camps have shown up in the mega empires and over and over Stalin, Hitler, you know, you know, here in in this region of the world they were recently used. This is a, a phenomenon that repeats. Let's set up camps where we separate the families out and then hurt people in various ways in the camps. This exists as far as history goes. So as far as who's going to end up in them is not quite clear, but it does seem, if we follow history and some other things that I spell out in the last chapter of Corporatism, it looks like some... We'll find out, but apparently some group of American citizens, is, are they going to be for Jews again, like they were in Germany? Is it going to be for Muslim people? Is it just going to be for, you American know, people. yeah, just, just a white guy like myself? I mean, who, what's it going to be exactly for? And it's, it appears to be some group like that. But it really doesn't matter. They're there. It's not announced properly in the mass media because they'll say, oh, a detention center in case there's such and such immigration activity. No, this is a, this is a government who's purposely destroying its own comedy, economy, starting wars through lies, chilling in all the money into them, building camps which are empty waiting to be filled. There's something really sinister here and the average American doesn't even know. Čini se da je taj korporatizam uzeo maha u zadnje vrijeme, nekako je se intenzivizirali, intenzivirali se sve te pojave. Hoću reći prije 30, 40, 50, 100 godina, čini mi se da chemtrailovi logori u takvim mjerama nisu bili prisutni niti cijepljenja. Nešto se zbiva posebno ili je to eto tako logička posl- logična posljedica tisućljeća razvoja Well there have there have has been corporatism for as far back as we can see but it fluctuates 
And usually it fluctuates in ways where it destroys itself, and then out of the destruction, a new system is born. World War II was a good example of when corporatism destroyed itself, and then out of it, the CIA, the United Nations, uh, the Pentagon in the United States, all these things came out of it. So, Zapravo je taj korporatizam uništio ljude, a ne sam sebe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, its primary goal, such as World War II again, is let's see how much of a war theater we can have. I mean, how can you get all these people in there fighting against each other? When, you look, when I look back at World War II footage, I have to think something possessed these people. They were out of their minds to do this, for, and they hardly even had reasons. The reasons they were given were fabricated. Uh, you know, and, and even if they were real, it wasn't enough to do all that. <laughs> so it's amazing that people can be tricked into acting in these ways. And yes, there, there is a ramp up in corporatism. So we can, based on the past, usually the ramp up happens and then there's some kind of cataclysm. Some sort. So we can, it does seem, based on the past, that something like that is coming. I don't know exactly what the cataclysm will be or if there even will be one, but it's something we have to look out for to understand these patterns through history. U knjizi se ne bavite rješenjima kako se zvuči iz korporatizma kojem smo zapravo svi izloženi i kroz reklame, i kroz televizije, i kroz očane, i kroz zapravo skoro svaki aspekt života u toliko mjeri da ne primjećujemo korporatizam nalik ribi koja ne primjećuje vodu u kojoj pliva. No, vidim da na majci imate indijanca, dobro, iz Amerike ste pa kao bi indijanci su običajna pojava tamo. No, ti indijanci zapravo imaju neke veze s onim kako bi ljudi mogli se odupret korporatizmu. Na koji način? I da li to nužno uključuje ne tehnološki svijet? Ok, what the American Indians did is as we said in the last show, bought and sold from each other. They didn't have someone who's not involved in the labor and creating the item taking a profit. So we directly sell and, and buy and sell products that we actually need. When this happens, an incredible thing happens to people. They have amazing amounts of leisure time. There's a, a myth that you know, the life of the primitives is so hard and the glorious life is civilization. All you need to do is go study primitives and civilization. You'll see the people working hard and doing what they don't want to do is, are the, is the civilized group. Primitives, as Henry David Thoreau wrote in his book Walden, they've got all kinds of leisure time. Their families are often very strong. They often have radically reduced crime, as we were saying earlier. So that has to be the answer. I mean, we can't fight the corporatists. They will just blow us out with a neutron bomb or, or something. They've got more weaponry than even Americans. There are so many gun owners. They still have so much more weaponry. The only thing you can do is find ways to exclude them from having any power. And the only way to do that is ignore their money, ignore their existence and focus on each other. And that's, that's exactly what the Native Americans did. That's why they were, um, their lifestyle was obliterated. And no, it doesn't have to... A lot of people say, oh, I don't want to go live like American Indians because I don't want to live in a Hogan and you know, have to grow my own food. You don't, it, it doesn't have to do with technology. The American Indians had enormous technology. They could create weather. They knew if they started a huge fire in this part of you know, a field, that the next day there would be a huge rainstorm because the smoke creates big rainstorms. So that's high technology. It's weather control technology. So it doesn't have to do with technology. It has to do with who's buying and selling from each other. Now, there's a type of corporatism in the book that I call anarchistic corporatism where people in factories have actually thrown out the CEO, the board, the, the leaders, and they, they, with, with force, they said, we're going to control the, the corporation by ourselves, and it worked. And it's found that we don't need the CEO. They just take all the money. What they t- kept all the money from themselves. The factory ran much better. Products were better. And everybody made all kinds of money. Opisali se zapravo da je prava priroda čovjeka uh, da radi malo, da bude puno s obitelji, da raspravlja o filozofiju živa u prirodi. To je potpuno suprotno današnjem korporativnom stilu života. Ali eto, nekako sam to zapamtio, čini mi se da nije toliko neizvedivo. Yeah, this is the way people are supposed to live. This is what's natural. This is what makes us happy. It's what many people, deep down, if they really search their feelings, know that they want. They want leisure. They want depth. They want to feel something powerful. They want to feel strong love between not just their family, but people, th- that's, you know, people all around. This is what makes us really feel like we're human. This, when you're in this vibe, you think to yourself, this is the way it's supposed to be. This is what I'm meant for. Our brains are, we have a pineal gland in our brain which delivers DMT. There's something called a sexual orgasm. These are euphoria. These are intoxication and love. Our physiology is made for this. Our minds are made for this, for happiness and joy and together, family, spirituality and profundity. But yet this is exactly the thing that is absent in the corporatist society. Jeffrey, thank you. 
do neke sljedeće prilike kada ćemo nastaviti ove razgovore. Vas pozdravljam. Bila ovo dakle priča o korporatizmu, to je nevidljiva matrica u kojoj smo svi više manje uvučeni, što ona hoće, kuda smjera. Pa to su pitanja već za milijun dolara. Za početak dovoljno je zapravo zapitati se jesu li svijet oko nas i događaj, kako su nam prezentirani doista onakvi kakvi se predstavljaju. Ostalo će valjda doći samo po sebi. Laku noć.